welcome to this special episode of our program daily debate uh, we'll be uh, of course covering the important uh, visit of president fatah sisi to china within his uh, three uh, uh, three countries uh, trip that took him first to bahrain second to china where he is uh, supposed to be attending the focus uh, forum uh, or the china africa uh, uh, forum uh, um, also, the president will be ending in Tajikistan. President Fatah Sisi arrived uh, in Beijing on Saturday, heading the Egyptian uh, delegation on an official three visit there, where he will be attending the uh, Chinese Africa cooperation FOCAC along with many other African countries. This uh, particular visit to China has its own uh, significance since Egypt is or will be assuming the uh, leadership of the African Union in 2019. The president uh, on the uh, sidelines of the visit uh, uh, witnessed several agreements and held a number of sidelines uh, um, meetings with several African leaders. Of course, uh, tomorrow the president will be um, um, delivering his speech or Egypt's speech before the POCA uh, summit where he will be uh, giving his uh, or the Egyptian vi uh, vision towards Africa's uh, development. We'll be discussing uh, today the president's visit to China, the FOCUS uh, forum, the significance of such a forum and how would that contribute to the African agenda or development uh, agenda for 2063. Before we delve into our discussion first, let's have this quick report and we'll come back for discussion. Ahead of attending the opening of the FOCAC Beijing Summit 2018, President Abdel Fattah Sisi partook in a high-level dialogue that brought together Chinese and African leaders and business representatives. The President also participated in the sixth conference of Chinese and African entrepreneurs. During his inaugural speech, Chinese President Xi Jinping emphasized the importance of harmonizing between economic and trade development and cooperation between China and African countries. The value of China-Africa trade volume amounted to 170 billion U.S. dollars because of the recently achieved industrial progress in Africa, thanks to several mega-projects including the Suez Canal Corridor. Investment opportunities are abound as the African continent is home to 60% of the world's uh, arable land. Africa has also 50% of the world's platinum and diamond reserves plus 5% of its natural gas and 4% of its coal reserves. Speaking for Central African countries, President of Chad, Idris Debi, called on the Chinese companies to pump more investments in Africa. For his part, Namibian President Haig Ginogob asserted the need for bringing the African poverty rate down and bolstering Chinese-African cooperation. Nigerian President Muhammad Buhari hailed the fruitful cooperation between China and his country, adding that he had been looking forward to deepening Nigerian-Chinese relations, finalizing the concluded agreements and signing new ones with China. The Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, also known as the FOCAC, is a terrenial forum designed to enhance overall Chinese-Africa ties. The edition of the forum is held under the theme China and Africa towards an even stronger community with a shared future through win-win cooperation.
Welcome back. Definitely China is a strategic partner and uh, definitely the uh, relations between uh, Egypt from one side, Africa uh, uh, at large, uh, has great uh, significance and uh, is awaiting much of the Chinese con uh, contribution. Definitely China has lots and lots of interest in uh, Africa and Africa has lots and lots of interest in the Chinese uh, contribution to this uh, huge continent which is filled with uh, resources. The relations between Egypt and uh, China has been alleviated particularly in recent years after visits by President of Fatah Sisi to China, the visit of the Chinese leader to Egypt, uh, which has taken our relations to a quantum leap. Today we'll be speaking about this and more. Uh, today uh, the president is in Beijing uh, to attend the FOCUC uh, forum. Uh, today uh, the FOCUC forum was inaugurated by the Chinese uh, leader and he delivered a speech in it. We'll be speaking about all that. Let me welcome our distinguished guests uh, for um, Ambassador Dr. Uh, Naman Galel, former assistant foreign minister. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. It is my pleasure. And uh, as I said at the very beginning, this uh, let me st uh, take the president's uh, trip. And this is the second leg of the president's uh, uh, trip. First, it took him to Bahrain, to, uh, today in China, and until tomorrow, then to Tajikistan. The significance of such a three uh, uh, countries trip. Uh, the trip is uh, so important. Uh, first of all, it takes uh, the president to these three places and uh, there is uh, a huge uh, distance between each one of them. Uh, but having said so, there is an important element uh, or relationship between these uh, three countries. Uh, that is, they are part of the Asian continent. Uh, two of them, they are Muslim countries. One is an Arab one is a Chinese, that is China. Uh, the three countries have something in common. In my view, it is the road, the Silk Road. Mm. Silk Road has two branches. One branch through the land that goes through Uzbekistan and the other Central Asian countries. And the second is the Maritime Silk Road. Maritime Silk Road goes from south of China through the uh, Pacific, then the Indian Ocean, then to the uh, Arabian uh, Peninsula. Gulf, mm. and, uh, uh, Gulf, and this goes through Bahrain, and then to Iraq, and so on. But uh, it has another branch, doesn't go to Bahrain, it goes to the uh, Babel Mandab, the, uh, and then it goes to the Red Sea and the Suez Canal. So the Suez Canal here is very important uh, stop or point, midpoint. Uh, midpoint point uh, with the uh, Maritime Silk Road. Mm. The, uh, and that is why it is very important for Egypt to show its interest in the Silk Road, which is a great initiative by President Xi of China. Uh, and uh, he attaches great importance on that uh, initiative. Uh, of course, uh, this initiative is uh, not a new one, but it depends on an ancient Chinese Silk Road, uh, which has uh, been reactivated uh, once more uh, from in the 21st century, but it goes back to the before Jesus Christ, before the uh, BC. So uh, here we have the trade is part of it. We have the uh, transport is another part, but we have the culture, which is more important in the Silk Road. And uh, China as a focus of the Silk Road and the starting point of the Silk Road uh, was very interested very much with the Middle East and with Europe. Uh, of course, the Middle East goes with the, our region, but also Central Asia and goes on the north. So the Silk Road in the ancient days, uh, as well as in the current uh, time, uh, goes through many ways. 
uh, up to London, up to Madrid with the uh, trains that uh, taking uh, many goods from China to the uh, European countries. And also the, there are the very important uh, maritime silk road. Uh, the China is a source of the Silk Road and the Middle East is a transit area as well as an ending area uh, getting all these uh, goods uh, uh, from uh, Syria, from many other uh, countries in the Middle East. Uh, Egypt was uh, a focal point. One is from the Maritime Silk Road, which goes through the, Mediterranean, uh, through the Red Sea, and the land road. The land road goes from Central Asia and from Iran in the ancient times, so uh, Syria and Damascus, and it goes to the Mediterranean, and from the Mediterranean goes to Alexandria. Alexandria was the end of Silk Road to some extent, and through Alexandria it goes to Africa, and then goes to Europe and to the front lines. Uh, luckily, today, we, as Egypt, has a very significant role to play because we have the Suez Canal, and the Suez Canal is the uh, main waterway and uh, that mm. makes the, space, the distance between China and Europe closer. And instead of going around the uh, cab uh, uh, of Africa, uh, and uh, here we are playing not to make the Suez Canal just as a uh, transit area, but to turn it to an economic area. Exactly. We'll speak about, of course, the uh, interest of China, particularly in the Suez Canal uh, zone and this uh, uh, industrial area. But before we go to that, let me say here that the president in China attending the Focus Sum, uh, Brother Forum, yes. this Af uh, Chinese Africa Forum, mm -hmm. and um, it, the president in himself was always keen to attend such a forum, uh, by himself. And uh, even the Chinese president uh, was keen, always keen, to inaugurate and attend the forum from the very beginning till the very end uh, on his own also. So how significant is this summit? How far do you think that um, um, Africa-China relation is a win-win uh, situation mm -hmm. for both? Let me start with the initiative itself to establish this forum. Luckily, I was ambassador of Egypt to China at that time. And in 2000, mm. uh, we started this idea. But the idea was started, uh, let me say frankly, started in the Egyptian house, in the residence of the Egyptian ambassador when I was there. And uh, as an expert or study uh, student of Chinese politics and culture and history, I invited the Chinese foreign minister to have a lunch in the Egyptian embassy. Uh, and we invited the African group. So uh, the African group, they have a dean and that all the groups have a dean, but I was a host and I was the initiator of the invitation for the foreign minister of China. And the foreign minister came with his all uh, his assistants, the uh, vice presidents and the directors of Africa and Middle East. And he delivered a speech in the Egyptian house. And this speech, he spoke about having more cooperation with Africa. And then, as an African group, we took the idea tossed by the uh, foreign minister and we played our game to make it materialize as proper initiative. Mm. And we have cons uh, discussion and exchange of views with the Vice Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, who was in charge of Africa and the Middle East, was G.P. Deng at that time. His name is G.P. Deng. And accordingly, uh, we reached a conclusion that we must establish a forum between the two groups. The forum was initiated in 2000, 
by the Chinese president at that time was uh, different president of today. And uh, this make a starting, a new starting point between Africa and China. Mm. Uh, we had to go back to history because the history is the best guide for us to build on. Uh, the history was there was a big fleet, commercial fleet, from China to East Africa. And that fleet was more than 30 uh, great ships and went to East Africa, led by a Chinese uh, captain or sailor. And uh, this sailor was uh, a Muslim, Chinese Muslim. And that was different than different other fleets that comes with guns and uh, big uh, uh, artillery or something like this uh, from European countries, uh, by particularly Portugal, but, uh, Spain, and uh, England, and uh, different uh, countries in Europe who were keen to occupy many countries in the Middle East and East Asia. This shows that the interest of China not to invade any country, but to start having a commercial and trade relationship. And that was a milestone in the relation between Africa and... The second milestone was related to Egypt. As you know, Egypt is a country of an ancient and great civilization. China was also a country of civilization, but Very not much as nice. ancient, as old as the Egyptian one. China was the country of a silk production. But the, what can we say, the, the color of the silk and the, uh, having it was not a fast color. China, uh, Egypt was developed enough to have fast color in the other uh, places of Egypt. And like in Luxor mm. and all these things. So the Chinese were very keen to know how to make this fast color so that their silk would be more precious and more valuable. And they sent during the Cleopatra era in Egypt, they sent the first ambassador from China to Egypt. And Egypt was the capital at that time was Alexandria. And he g g brought some gifts to the Cleopatra and then he get the, uh, the technology of the fasting color for this. Uh, then the second uh, trip or second um, step came to jump the history to President Nasser and his meeting in uh, Bandung with the Prime Minister of China, uh, who was a great uh, leader, uh, Shun Lai, and uh, was introduced together by another great leader who was Nehru at that time. So the leaders of Africa in the Bandung and Asia, they developed many new concepts. These concepts based on how to build a new order, a new political order or a new international order. That, that takes me to now, the future. I mean here mm -hmm. that this great history of mm -hmm. collaboration and uh, means of cooperation with no intention to, uh, of invasion yes. or uh, to, uh, uh, um, to be uh, or to have uh, this, uh, this will for uh, taking the resources, but for uh, uh, mutual cooperation. That takes us to our future nowadays. Mm. And I guess this um, theme of the forum uh, just illustrates this kind of future relations that China want to build. I mean here, this, uh, the, the, the forum is held under the theme China and Africa towards an even stronger community with a shared future through win-win cooperation. Yes. If we speak about cooperation between China mm. and Africa mm. at large, 
and we speak about China and Egypt in particular. Mm -hmm. So China and Egypt, for an instance, mm -hmm. and uh, this changed the um, the polarization of how the world is going uh, through those days, and. Uh, this is part of the Egyptian foreign policy, that it is not uh, a partner to one certain entity, but rather open to the whole world. Mm. How do you read this and how this put Egypt and China, or how does this put the Chinese-Egyptian relations in the next stage? You know, when President Nasser and uh, Prime, uh, Prime Minister uh, Shun Lai, they met, they spoke about the relations. At that time, let me take just a bit of a history. At that time, Egypt was encircled or squeezed by the uh, American, and China was uh, even isolated. So the two leaders, when they met, they discussed three points. One, how to cooperate together. Two, how to work for building a new a political uh, order. Uh, three, how to look at the future. To cooperate together, China introduced Egypt to the Soviet Union. And that led to the first uh, transaction or first uh, deal between Egypt and Czechoslovakia at that time to get arms mm. when America was not giving arms to Egypt and letting Egypt defense not at the same level to fight against anyone who attacks. And you know, the, there is no need to say... Israel the, was then yes. the enemy. Yes. yes. Uh, but uh, when the... Uh, transaction or the deal done between uh, package between Egypt and Czechoslovakia then became the first step to build a new future for Egypt and a new future for the Middle East uh, to have uh, not to be unarmed but to be uh, prepared to defend its own self. The second point was China as I said it was isolated then Egyptian diplomatic relations oh. established with China in 30th May 1956 that break the isolation by the American particularly who were keen to isolate China as a communist country. And this uh, make the opening to Africa by Egypt to China and to some extent also to the Soviet Union of that time. Because China, all the African countries, or most of the African countries, were under occupation or nearly semi-independent countries. They were very few. <coughs> One of them was Egypt, because we get our independence, as you know, on uh, June 1956, when the British uh, withdrew its, their troops. So uh, China became uh, open or Africa became open to China and China started to develop its relation with Africa. Uh, at that time was the what is called liberation movement in Africa and this was supported by China and uh, by the Soviet Union uh, and this led at the end by this. But the coming to independence of the African countries gave a great credit to China and a great asset to China. The credit because they supported Africa, but the asset, the African countries became supportive to the Chinese country. They promoted that China has the right to get back its seat in the United Nations, mm. because at that time, it was only Taiwan who was representing China. And Taiwan, as you know, just a small province Yes. Uh, compared to the mainland China. So both of them, they get the interest of each other, they get the benefit of exchanging this relation. And then we came to the second stage. The second stage after independence, 
uh, then you need to develop your own country. Mm -hmm. And here China jumped in. Unfortunately, the Western countries were not ready to give uh, assistance or economic uh, loans uh, to uh, many African countries, while China was ready to give. It was not rich China at that time. It's different than what is the stage we are today. But it gave something, and it gave at least a hope that there is somebody who is re ready to give assistance to the African countries, including Egypt. Let me say in 1956, after establishing diplomatic relations between China and Egypt, we had the invasion by the tripartite aggression. And the Chinese president, Mao Zedong, at that time, he said, when the British refused to buy the Egyptian cotton, he said, we are ready to buy all the Egyptian cotton if we make one centimeter longer in the dress of a Chinese person. And uh, then they supported Egypt uh, by different moral things uh, and some assistance. Uh, and this developed the relation. And this was the dawn of a new international order. That is, the uh, two blocks, they were one with, one against, and so on and uh, the Middle East and the African countries and uh, some East, uh, Southern European countries became the developer of a new, a new political order. That is called the non-alignment movement led by the three or three towering personalities, Nasser, Tito, and Nehru. There were Sukarno and uh, many other uh, from uh, Africa or Asia. Uh, countries and they led it and they developed it and this led to the a new detente between East and West because the developing countries and the non-aligned mm. movement were keen to promote peace. We were not keen to make more fighting but keen to promote peace. Definitely history has um to do much with uh, the development of the relations and I think that we are building uh, on the momentum that should have been built years ago or continued. Yeah. But now it's taking on uh, the right uh, track. Before we continue on with uh, our discussion, uh, let's have first this report and Foreign Minister uh, Samah Shukri describes China as strategic partner to Africa. Let's watch. In his speech at the ministerial meeting preceding the Forum on China and Africa Cooperation Summit, Minister of Foreign Affairs Sameh Shukri praised China as a strategic partner to Africa. Shukri said that China has been providing support for Africa in different sectors, describing its policy as balanced for it does not intervene in the internal affairs of other countries and refrains from practicing political conditionality while bringing benefit for all partners. The minister said that the world is going through a critical stage in history as the current world order is engulfed with ascending political polarization that exerts negative impact on the international cooperation system. Shukri named poverty and low development rates as the main challenges facing developing countries, especially African ones. He elaborated that those challenges are amplified and complicated by the spread of terrorism, extremism and guerrilla warfare. Shukri also added that in the face of the challenges Africa faces, international cooperation with strategic partners becomes a high priority, describing the meetings of ministers that took place Saturday as fruitful as they resulted in Beijing declaration and the action plan for 2018 to 2022. Shukri concluded his word by wishing success to the current and future joint FOCAC leaderships to serve the highly appreciated strategic partnership between China and Africa. It's worth noting that President Abdel Fattah Sisi and his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping 
Witness Saturday five cooperation deals signed by the ministries of both countries in various sectors. This comes on the sidelines of the Egyptian leader's visit to Beijing to attend the FOCAC summit. The deals include enhancing industrial quality, a Chinese cooperation in projects such as the electrical train linking the new administrative capital in Egypt and the 10th of Ramadan city, a grant for manufacturing an Egyptian satellite and investments in Egypt's Suez Canal zone. Welcome back, and I guess we have over the phone Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister and the Secretary General of the Arab Investors Union. Good evening to you, Ambassador Bayoumi. Good evening, how are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. Uh, we're speaking about the President's visit to China. We're speaking about China as a strategic partner. From the economic point of view, uh, today the President have witnessed the signing uh, of several agreements. But let me here ask you, uh, about China as a main contributor to the uh, uh, or to the development of Africa. This is a, a sort of a mission of three phases. One is the, the relation between Egypt and China, and of course we have a very good trade relations, 11 billion dollars, the volume of trade. But the new thing there that uh, China is a country which is seeking for foreign, indi foreign direct uh, uh, investment to, to go to China itself. But now China is starting to uh, contribute to the investment in Africa and to the investment in Egypt also. Yeah. Now we are attracting China to invest especially in the Suez Canal zone. And uh, as our president uh, declared that we are with the idea and the project of the Silk Road, uh, China will participate for the fast train and in the energy sector. Another dimension is the relation between China and Egypt in Africa, in what we call the tripartite uh, uh, cooperation. And of course, Egypt has a long experience in Africa even uh, uh, before uh, the presence of China in Africa. Uh, it, the, the, the conference also is a, a good chance for the, our president to meet his counterparts uh, of the African uh, presidents. Today in the newspapers, the, 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 there are some pictures of the president with uh, the president Bashir of mm. Uh, Sudan, Sudan with, with the, the Prime Minister of uh, Ethiopia, Ethiopia. Yes. and uh, the President of Somalia. This shows you that uh, the President sees this opportunity to make several meetings with several countries in order to deepen and widen our relation with our uh, uh, African countries, our, our brotherly African countries. Uh, I, I am quite happy that the, 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 the visit is taking its place, that China will be present in our investment in, in Egypt, that Egypt and China will cooperate much more in the field of Africa. Yes. From your point of view, that is on the economic side. How about the political side and how do you view the Africa-Chinese uh, strategic interests or strategic partnership in this domain? Yes, in, in, uh, the, the political dimension is much older uh, since Gamal Abdel Nasser recognized the presence. Yes, the exactly, of as the, the Ambassador Galel uh, uh, Republic. And that was again the will of the West, Europe, or the United States. And it continued uh, close uh, political relations, even uh, security uh, cooperation. And China is supporting the Arab cause everywhere in the international field, in the United Nations. Also, the, the Egypt and the Arabs are supporting whatever China is taking of positions in its foreign uh, policy. Mm -hmm. 
Right, uh, Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former assistant foreign minister and the secretary general of the Arab Investors Union, we thank you very much for joining thank us. You. Thank you very much. Back to you, Ambassador Gilel. And uh, yes, here the uh, uh, Ambassador Bayoumi spoke about, uh, uh, as you said, uh, respectively, uh, the history of the Chinese relation. How about building on the momentum of those historical relations? What is the strategic relations between Egypt from one side, Africa, and China at this particular time, how China is important for this continent? Definitely China is very important to the continent because the continent needs a lot of assistance for its development. Uh, let us be frank to each other. I mean, between China and Africa and Egypt. Uh, first is the concept of the tripartite cooperation. That is an old concept. And it cannot fit with the Chinese relation with Africa. Mm. China is now involved deeply in Africa. So they don't need Egypt to help it. In the 50s, they need Egypt to help. And, but today, China has a good relation with many African countries. So that is one thing. But the second thing that the China is in need of the raw materials from Africa. So they can buy it straight away. They develop the oil, gas, and uh, iron, and many other uh, raw materials from Africa or material related to the energy. So they don't need Egypt to, to help in that. But they need Egypt to give the political orientation, because Egypt is one of the top leaders on African continent. And Egypt is going to be chairmanship for the uh, African, Union. African Union next, year. next year. So that is, has a very important role to play uh, in this connection, uh, and especially President uh, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi managed to develop a good relation with many African countries. After uh, some time in the past, the relation between Egypt and many other uh, African countries were not as good as it used to be during another time, for example, or mm. era of liberation, and so on. Uh, we developed the foreign policy of Egypt since uh, the uh, President uh, Sisi came, uh, they developed a very close relationship. And uh, President Sisi was keen and is keen to attend all the African meetings and to visit many African countries. Very much indeed. So was the uh, Foreign Minister of Egypt and so on. For some time before the, this era which we are living, there, there were Presidents were not going to Africa and so on. Yes, Africa that, was not a first yes. priority for 30 years at so. least. Very much indeed, and it is becoming a real priority. And it is very much obvious in Egypt's foreign policy or current foreign policy. If we speak about uh, the, 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 the importance of, uh, of Africa for Egypt, particularly that Egypt has a vision for development that, go, that goes along with the sustainable development of Africa, which is uh, uh, 2063. Mm. Uh, from your point of view, tomorrow the president will be delivering uh, Egypt his speech, uh, uh, his speech where I, uh, I guess that he will be delivering Egypt's vision towards uh, uh, achieving those goals uh, Africa needs and, and, and what uh, we need uh, from China. Egypt, China, and uh, has gained, uh, the, the, these relations has gained momentum, particularly after the president met on the, uh, with the Chinese leader on the sidelines of the BRICS in 2017. And then there were mutual visits. Uh, for, the se for, the, for the first time in decades, a Chinese president comes to Egypt for an instant, uh, shows interest, real interest in cooperation with Egypt. 
How do you view the future relations between Egypt and China at this upcoming stage? Why it is important, particularly while we are going through all the circumstances that is going on in the region? Uh, let me just give uh, a quick review of the situation in the Middle East. Egypt is a leading country in the Middle East. It is the biggest one in general, population, economy, in spite of the difficulties in the economic situation in yes. Egypt. But the real economy of Egypt is the human resources. Mm. And this makes Egypt is a leading role. And here, China always uh, recognizes the Egyptian uh, status uh, and its strength and its uh, role to support China in the past. And China also supported Egypt in many uh, different ways. I, I must tell you one very important uh, idea or piece of information that when the Arabs, after Camp David agreement, boycotted Egypt, China was supporting Egypt. So China were supporting Egypt in all difficult times, in 56, in uh, 70s, and now in the economic uh, difficulties after the so-called uh, 25th Revolution, which uh, destroyed many of the uh, economic mm. building of Egypt. So that is one important thing. But China and Egypt, they, as they belong to the ancient civilizations, we have what is called the club of civilization. That includes Egypt, China, and many other countries, like India, and so on. Uh, these countries, they have something in common. The concept in Chinese politics is to build a peaceful new order. Not to fight, not to invade, Egypt also of the same point of view. Yeah. We don't want to invade anyone. We want peace with everyone. We want to cooperate and build something in common. The concept in China, they put it win-win game, not win-lose uh, game. Uh, Egypt also is keen to develop itself and to develop the other neighboring countries if it is possible. China is doing the same. And the concept of the or initiative of the Silk Road is based on these concepts. Uh, so we have something in common in the principle, on the ideas for building a peace in the world and the uh, cooperation among each other. Okay. And you How can about find, you can, sorry, uh, I'm interrupting you. No, uh, we can find that Egypt is not involved with any country by its forces. Egypt is keen to defend, to defend its own borders and its own national uh, security. Of course, it has a principle that it will defend the Arab security because it's part and parcel of the Egyptian uh, national security. And that is why President Mubarak, uh, sorry, President Sisi went to Bahrain. Mm. This is because Bahrain is a target to some uh, neighboring countries and Egypt is supportive always to Bahrain against the intrusion by the neighboring country, which is, as you know, Iran. Yes, definitely, this, the Gulf, uh, this uh, uh, area and Egypt's relation with the Gulf, uh, as President Sisi has said several times, is a red, uh, red line for Egypt. The security of the Gulf is a red line for Egypt, has always been the policy. The foreign policy of Egypt is openness to the whole world. China and uh, its interest in the Suez Canal area. Mm. And not just the navigation route, but also the economic zone. Yeah. And China has uh, shown and spoke several times about its uh, interest in this area. Please. Let me tell you, as an ambassador, I have a very uh, tough experience with the cooperation between Egypt and China. During the former regime, President, uh, former President Mubarak, he visited China many times. But unfortunately, the speed of development, economic development and economic cooperation was not as it should be, had been. 
now we have President Sisi visited China and met with the Chinese leader for six times, three on the margin of the uh, international organizations or uh, gathering like G20 and BRICS, mm. and now the uh, African Forum, African Chinese Forum. Plus the three times uh, two visits to China separately and the Chinese mm. president came to Egypt. So they met six times. They developed some sort of understanding between each other and some sort of support between each other, to each other, and so on. But the point here is that China was keen to invest in Egypt. But at that time, in the past, there was no feasibility study for projects. I, I as an ambassador there, we were suffering with my colleagues because the Egypt law of investment was not really up to date and the seriousness of taking the foreign investment were not there and so on. China is keen to invest, but they demand one important item, that it should be a law of investment, properly, clear, transparent, and so on. And the infrastructure should be built. So, and that is what is done now by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. So that's why they are coming. And if we remember the, uh, some deal done, uh, China now is ready to invest more than or nearly two million dollars in Egypt. Mm. In the last 30 years before, there were the investment of China were less than half a million uh, in Egypt. So now we are really find two serious leaders, two serious countries to invest and cooperate to each other. And that's why the Suez Canal uh, economic uh, area and the uh, new administrative uh, capital of Egypt and many other projects yeah. like the train, uh, electric uh, train, and so on. That's, I must say that there are a lot of possibility for China to come and invest in Egypt. But they need more uh, feasibility study for the projects. They don't put any uh, conditions, any political conditions, because the China principle not to interfere in the internal affairs of any country. Very much indeed. I guess that um, indeed the seriousness of uh, both uh, leaders plus the will, the sincere will of both uh, countries to cooperate with each other. Um, I have only a few minutes left for me here, and people would really ask, why the third leg of this tour would be Uzbekistan? Yeah, Uzbekistan is, uh, has three kinds of importance. One, it is a Muslim country. And Egypt as a leading Muslim country, so they need to develop its relation. And we must not forget that Tashkent was one of the centers of political and Islamic uh, concepts and civilization in the Middle Age. So that is one thing. And when uh, Uzbekistan and the other Central Asian countries uh, get their independence after the collapse of the former Soviet Union, uh, the Egypt came to them and established diplomatic relations. So they need to develop these relations. Secondly, uh, Uzbekistan probably has a very unique relationship yeah. with Egypt. I recall, if you, you are old enough, to remember there was some park in the center of Cairo called Uzbe Uzbekia uh, Center or uh, Garden or something. Yeah. Uzbekia, why it is Uzbekia? It is from Uzbek. So there were, are, there are many old uh, relationships were not uh, really uh, studied by the that, Egyptians. That's a piece of information yes. I, I, I <laughs> so, just had right now. The third one, the uh. third element, is that Uzbekistan is part of the uh, Silk Road in Central Asia. 
Definitely. So that is a very important thing for so Egypt. In this upcoming days, we'll be seeing more of the uh, uh, Egyptian attendance to the, uh, in China and, of course, the third leg of this tour to Uzbekistan. My time is out. I have to end it here. Ambassador Dr. Norman Galel, former assistant for Mercer, thank you very much for being with us and for your input today. Thank you very much. We wish the best for you and the TV and its development in the 21st century, not to live in the 19th century. Uh, and uh, we wish for the best trip of President Sisi. He's a good guy. He's working hard with honesty and integrity. I hope all the Egyptian uh, bureaucracy will be as transparent, as efficient, as dedicated as President Sisi today. Thank you many very much. Many thanks for you. Dear viewers, many thanks for watching. Tomorrow would be another colleague with another episode. Until tomorrow, it's good night.